hopefully you'll find this exciting we do and assistive technology is really my passion and this uh, lab has been a collaboration between industrial design the Center for Disability Research and Service and kinesiology and mechanical engineering and looking with other partners and the Veterans Administration has been a great partner and collaborator also what we've been doing is looking at challenges that people with disabilities have and this population assistive technology is really the great equalizer for them to enjoy work employment uh, recreation and leisure and living on their own and so with Jared's uh, students and my students we've really have been going in and designing some really cool assistive technology and with the new tools they have today there are really some fantastic assistive technology devices that we've been able to customize so I'll let Jared take it away kind of show you what we've been doing uh, I tried to shock some people universal design is a good thing I, I mentioned the shift from universal design to something else but it's still a part of what we do and what it is uh, in the past basically people have tried to create solutions that can be used by as many people as possible and what we're seeing now is a little bit of an evolution here so you've got one tool that is used by a number of people uh, essentially because it needs to be inclusive and this is driven primarily by traditional manufacturing where you've got the economies of scale where it's cheaper to produce um, a large volume of, of objects uh, than it is to just produce one but we're seeing some of that change and uh, a lot of you are probably um, not aware that you're interacting with assistive technology on a regular basis those of you wearing glasses in the audience that's a form of assistive technology uh, every day you walk to the uh, grocery store you're walking in and out of something that was designed again to uh, be inclusive of just opening a door uh, there's lots of other things including um, geriatrics arthritis uh, many of you are probably familiar with this object a, a potato peeler and a woman who had trouble um, with one of these because of arthritic conditions asked her husband to do something about it which led to products that I'm sure that many of you have in your uh, in your home today which is the OXO good grips it's again a recognizable uh, solution that has carried on to us and, and when we first started this project one of our goals was not just to design products for the people who uh, volunteered to participate in the project but also to look for opportunities to, to market those and extend those um, we've uh, we've had a little bit of a shift but just just to sh set up the project over the years we've had a different number of students involved and we have a different number of uh, volunteers but the key component is that we put together this collaborative team uh, with multiple expertise we've got design students uh, the, the collaboration is run every spring with in the context of an undergraduate design studio and with Scott's rehabilitation and assistive technology students but they come around and the process is involved where we go through a discovery because we've got tangible people on a research basis it's really easy when you've got one person and you just ask them uh, what is it that that you're struggling with uh, and they sometimes are uh, very uh, ready to volunteer information and sometimes not so much a lot of the veterans that we worked for uh, or worked with even told us that they didn't have any challenge they had gotten used to maybe working with their prosthetic and so it went beyond just this interview but we uncovered some things that uh, these individuals were, were concerned about it wasn't only problems that they had but also opportunities where they felt maybe a device could help them out but the students sit down and try to be as informal as possible so that we uh, begin to develop a relationship and then we start the research side of things so uh, this is Shanae and she had trouble getting in and out of bed from her wheelchair and she exerted a lot of effort going across just a simple wooden board um, and then also in this is, is sometimes we're asked uh, to approach one challenge but through this research and observation contextual research we realize there's something else this young lady Alexis uh, asked us she wanted to explore our artistic side so she wanted to be able to take she's um, in a wheelchair spinal cord injury um, and she wanted to be able to take pictures and paint again uh, but in the process of meeting with her in her environment we uh, witnessed this which was just the simple act of eating every day and the challenge of this assistive device um, and just how long it took for this device to fit to her hand so you know you're hungry the last thing you want to worry about is how you pick up a fork but very quickly we recognize that if only this was at just a different angle we could improve this from taking one minute uh, to taking just a few seconds and also the fit would improve 
We also do secondary research. We look at the number of, uh, we look at the disability itself. We look at the number of people in the U.S. population affected by the disability. We also, as Scott mentioned, we worked with the wounded warriors. We looked at the number of uh, military veterans and active duty servicemen affected by similar uh, disabilities that we were um, encountering. And then one of the more fun things that we do that is empathy modeling. So we ask our students, the first design problem they have is put yourselves in the shoes uh, of um, these client users that we're working with. You can probably tell here that this is a pair of safety goggles. Um, we were working with a young lady who was completely blind in her left eye and had vision that we tried through talking with her to mimic uh, by putting saran wrap over the other one. So it, it, it limited the vision. And then we walked through some of those tasks that they're challenged with. Uh, just getting around, one of the things she talked about um, was just getting on the bus and going to pick up groceries. Uh, it's interesting how many people are, are um, challenged with the simple uh, three times a day exercise of, of eating and preparing food. Uh, how do you measure something? Um, this is a gentleman who had a little bit of a challenge getting uh, around without his prosthesis. He was a double amputee. How is it to get in and out of a door when you're in a wheelchair? They storyboard, we do a lot of sketching and design, we sketch out concepts, and we keep the people involved the entire process. Uh, so those users are, are giving us immediate feedback, and then we uh, get into um, very quick and rough prototyping. How quickly can we prototype something and test it, get some feedback and learn from it? Again, it's a very short studio. Uh, we, again, have the people involved the entire step of the way, what works, what doesn't. Uh, and we can do multiple iterations before we come to that final solution, um, which may be something as simple as a conveyor belt to help somebody not exert so much energy going from wheelchair to bed. It may be something about picking up pills. I want to show the breadth of some of the stuff that we do. This is very simple, but uh, if you drop a pill and you take prescription medicine and you're in a wheelchair and you have limited dexterity, a giant claw isn't going to help you, an adhesive patch on the end of an extension rod is not something you're going to want to put on a pill that you're about to ingest. And so developing solutions like this, this is a measuring cup for those with limited, uh, limited uh, vision. I would talk more about it, but I don't have enough time. Uh, this um, added dignity to this gentleman's um, life and also prevented that bottom little plastic valve from rubbing up against his leg every day to where he had to reposition it. Uh, this was a guy who wanted to play Xbox, but only had one hand. Um, you might not recognize what this is for, but uh, Woody is on our Auburn University basketball, wheelchair basketball team, and this just helped him make, play basketball. And then we come back to Alexis, who now is painting with the help of this device. But beyond that, we, we, we designed this thing. It's 3D printed. Um, it can be customized to each individual, and we created multiple attachments. So not only are we, help, are we helping her paint, but that middle one actually allows her to utilize an elevator, which is an assistive device in its, in its own right. But if you can't access the button because it's recessed, it's a little bit challenging to get on there in the first place. So I talked about universal design, which is the pursuit of one thing that addresses the needs of a lot. Well, the evolution of uh, 3D printing and digital fabrication allows us to kind of turn the economies of scale upside down, not upside down, but flatten it out to where the cost per unit for one highly customized device is the same as if you were making 10,000 of them. Um, and so really the challenge becomes now not just the design of a device and hoping that you can address the needs of an entire population, but it's designing the system and the platform. You design the device first, but you keep in mind, how do I design a platform that enables somebody to be fit with something, and then how do I make it accessible? That last device that we showed with Alexis, um, I've got a graduate research assistant right now that is designing a tool that can also be 3D printed that would measure the diameter of your uh, fingers, the location relative to the, uh, the shaft of that device, and give you variables that then can be plugged into a CAD model that will generate the 3D model that then you can 3D print. So it's a highly customized solution, uh, one per one person. So it's a little bit different, um, and something that's fairly simple, and the variables are, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot of variables on this device, but when we start to look at the opportunity where some of this can go, the variables in a prosthetic that might be 3D printed for somebody uh, based upon height, age, um, weight, activity level, activity and task, uh, has far-reaching um, opportunities, and we're currently putting together teams to pursue this. Uh, in fact, one of the first people working on this project uh, eight years ago um, is now at Alabama State in prosthetics, and he's looking to help us out on this. But uh, 
that's kind of the, the talk. I thank you for your time. And then here's our contact information. If you've got any interest, we'd love to collaborate. We have collaborated with a, a bunch of colleges on campus. And you can see that there's an opportunity basically to pull just about everybody in. It's blinking, and we're done. Yeah.